ho ho hi yo and welcome back so guys we have a new dragon of the month to get hatching which means we'll also be getting the singularity dragon as a reward for completing the last what is it three months of uh legendary dragon collections but uh, either way we have the beautiful little virgo dragon egg its egg is so cool i don't know what it is but these egg designs recently have been top tier really enjoying it dml designers so this is the virgo dragon so the virgo dragon is a nurturer dedicated to helping all those in need exquisitely noble this dragon works hard to strengthen both its own well-being and the well-being of its friends isn't that cute look at that it's a hard worker trying to make everything good for everyone and plus let's not forget the bonus 200 dcp that we get for unlocking this legendary which is wonderful i can appreciate that very much so we collect that and the constellations of summer you've collected all the dragons required congratulations here's our beautiful little singularity dragon he's kind of like a weird planety dragon i know sort of like he's out in the cosmos or something it's kind of weird kind of weird but i like it I like it quite a lot so if we go into our eggs now he should be in here uh assuming we can find him there he is next to the dial dragon and when we go to hatch him he'll take just over a day to hatch but he's got like my favorite colors on him like the aqua turquoisey blue and greens very very nice indeed so if you're wondering what the stats are for the virgo dragon i have gone through them before but i'm just going to show you for anyone that is ever unsure of how you can find the stats for a dragon go onto the dmr wiki type in the dragon's name click on the dragon's page and there you go nice and easy simplest thing in the world to find out so if you wanted to know the virgo is a legendary earth and shadow dragon 248 base health 76 attack it's down in the bottom right it's quite small i'll give you that look maybe we should zoom in to like 2 billion percent there you go nice and easy but overall would you use it on a team it's weird because earth and shadow together is kind of iffy but not too bad overall i guess it depends on how many other legendaries you have there's definitely better dragons out there but definitely worth getting this dragon mainly for the zodiac dragon prize and you know the singularity dragon as well and you know free dragon collector points also but little eok here just sort of flippers about all over the floor look at him look at him he just sort of floats I mean, he moves his flippers a little bit but he just kind of moonwalks across the floor which is kind of cool i suppose um but i do prefer the vogar dragon's adult form i think i don't know what it is i just like it i like it a little bit more so we'll feed eok here i'd say to level 25 so that we can get the bonus points a wonderful there we go so now with the amount of dcp that we get it is increased quite a lot from that base amount that we got but really nice greens on the Virgo dragon in particular. I like it. So for anyone that is a Virgo, hope that they did you justice with this beautiful little dragon. And you can see now we're at 325 dragon collector points. Nothing to snuff your nose out. But earlier we did actually hatch the Divine Ra dragon as well because I needed to make space so that I could get some breeding points for the event. So there is the Ra dragon finally on a PC windows account wonderful so the Rare dragon is the all-powerful divine dragon of light and order talk about an impressive skill set it is locked in constant struggle with the chaotic apep dragon so pesky vikings are no big deal so uh, yeah we did get this guy on our android account a very long time ago but those extra pieces in the dungeon have finally made this guy available to us and the Rare dragon is essentially just a better version of our lantern dragon because it is a divine fire and light dragon and it is a an exception it's slightly better than um than he is my poor little saini just getting outclassed you know how the loki dragon just basically outclasses the autumn dragon the Ra dragon basically does the same thing to saini the lantern dragon so um feels bad but at least we have this dragon and again bonus dragon collector points means i am a happy girl 525 it's wonderful but i'm gonna call the Ra dragon squack because i don't know i look at the Ra the Ra dragon and all i can think is squack 
That's the noise that I imagine it to make. Maybe you see it as this grandiose god-like figure, but that's all I see it saying. Squank. I don't know. Don't ask. That's just my thoughts, okay? Okay? And so on our first attempt, we got the clay dragon. Another 14 hour, 24 minutes. Kind of sucks for breeding points. But anywho, back in up-to-date DML land, there are a couple of bundles out at the moment that are kind of interesting. There's also a bundle for the Cupid Dragon with some event currency for £4, which is kind of iffy, but if you wanted to buy that, you could. And you could also get the Ladybug Dragon with 10 Divine Tickets for £4. 10 Divine Tickets isn't going to get you anything, so don't think about it as being too great. But it is Friday, which does mean that we will be getting a Whale Mart very soon. We will also be getting weekend events, hopefully. But... Along with all of that, the weekly schedule has been released, which tells us what is going to be going on in the next week or so. So, August 12th to the 18th, Adam posted this on the forums. So, hello everyone, just dropping the info about next week's event schedule. So, August 12th to the 16th, Clan Siege, take the opposing clans fought to win various valuable rewards. That's what we're used to. August 12th to the 16th, Crowded Nursery, hatch as many dragons as you can, rarer dragons give you a higher score. I wish... This told us whether we're going to be getting divine tickets out of it or not. Maybe we won't. I would hope that we'd be getting divine tickets from everything. But to be fair, this is the hatching event and we normally don't get points or divine tickets for that. And then the 12th to the 19th, the new bottomless dungeon. Fight your way through infinite waves of opponents and explore the dark chambers, blah, 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 blah. The weekly time limited dragon is going to be the violin. So, the Violin Dragon is this weird-ass looking thing here. Um, he is very creepy in his own way, uh, but I guess he's got a little bit of charm to him. So, he is indeed an epic with energy, wind, and metal. Uh, not the most fabulous dragon out there, but definitely one that you'll probably want to add to your collection. So, that will be the new Dungeon Dragon next week. So then, 16th to the 19th is a golden opportunity. Spend as much gold as you can to earn divine tickets. Leaderboard prize being the Rock Snake Dragon. So, we can get divine tickets and we can get a Rock Snake Dragon out of it. Sounds pretty cool, but that's going to be the leaderboard prize, so most people probably won't get that. And then August 12th to the 19th is the Boss Challenge event, which is a major event in the divine events because they have been in the past the best place to spend your gems to get as many divine tickets as you can so i expect a lot of people to be spending an awful lot of money during these boss challenges my god i have a drink and it keeps expanding that's it you're going on the floor keeps making loud noises but anyway beat all the celestial bosses to complete rounds win divine tickets and the black hole dragon so for that boss challenge event, we will get divine tickets as a reward, and plus we'll also be getting the black hole dragon. And I'm a big fan of this dragon, he looks cool, uh, his concept is kind of terrifying, imagine having a literal black hole on your island somewhere. At least he can um, somehow contain his own mass, um, I don't know, I don't know how you could conceptualise this in reality, but hey, this is DML, right? So that is him. And August 12th to the 19th, the weekly dragon is going to be the Academic. The parents being the Candy plus Geiger dragons. And the Academic is this pretty little boy here. Looks like he's just graduated, uh, which is a little bit weird because he's called Academic. So shouldn't it be post-Academic dragon? I don't, I don't know. But anyway, he is an Earth, Plant and Wind epic dragon. But he's a dragon of the week. If you need to get him, you can. He's also been used in quite a lot of dragon of the month breeding combos before. And not too many recently. But he has been a very handy dragon for me. Like if we go to our ac Academic dragon, where is he? We can find him by searching. So here he is. And this guy has given me so many legendary babies you would not believe. Little Camo here. He's actually a stud. He's actually a playboy. Um, again, his outward appearance. Maybe he does it on purpose so that he can take advantage. I don't know. But either way, um, I would recommend you get one. Just in case you ever need to use it. Same with most dragons of the week. Dragons of the month. Things like that. You're just better off getting the limited time dragons. If, you know, mainly with the Dragons of the Week, it's tough if you've got a bunch of the, the normal breedables to go for. 
but sometimes the epics that you get as Dragons of the Week can be used in breeding or various different special breeds. Maybe even one day they'll be used in stuff like chain breeding events, in which case you would be kicking yourself if you didn't actually bother to breed them in the past. So, I would highly recommend getting the limited time dragons before you get the, the breedables and the dragons that are always available. But at the same time, if you are a brand new player, then you do realistically need to try and complete your codex as soon as you can. That's why I, realistically, I think the people that get the most value out of the second breeding den are probably the newer players, because with so much other stuff going on, say you could use one breeding den to breed the dragon of the month, and you could use the second breeding den to, you know, breed all the shop dragons. Because I haven't had to breed shop dragons in such a long time, and I can only imagine how stressful it is these days, having to breed all of these guys, and then having to breed the Dragons of the Week and the Dragons of the Month and the Special Chain Breeding Event Dragons, it's chaos. And I understand that, so, you know, just bear it in mind, you know, just some food for thought if you are someone in that position and you're sort of struggling on, uh, you know, what you should really be focusing on. I guess the general rule of thumb is when you've got all of the basic breedable dragons, you can probably start going for the legendaries and weeklies pretty seriously at that point. And by the time you've gotten most of the the breedables that you need, apart from maybe the epics, obviously, uh, you're probably going to be at that point where you've already got a couple of epics, maybe you've got a couple of legendaries anyway. I don't know. Everyone progresses differently. I mean, I was player level 60 before I got my first legendary, and my first legendary was the Comet, who was um, pretty bad, to be honest. I still love him with all my heart, but unfortunately the Comet Dragon just does not live up to the the powerhouses that are out there. Again, compared to something like the Ra Dragon, the Ra is just so much better than him, even though their elements are completely different and they do completely different things, but, you know. The little Reptar here being my main guy, he has been babified just to glorify him. You know, I'll always love him in his own way, but we had to replace him eventually. I don't know, maybe you're someone that, rather than using the good dragons, maybe you just use the ones that you like. In which case, I completely understand and sympathize. I want to do the same thing, but it just feels so bad grinding for like months and months and months for legendary materials just to use it on a, you know, mediocre legendary. I'd rather just use it on a super powerful one just to make all of that mindless grinding worth it, you know. But it's up to you. Again, some people love to play the game for like six hours a day. They just love grinding the fights as soon as they become available. Other people only log in maybe once or twice a day. You know, everything's different. Some people only like breeding for the weeklies. And some people only like breeding legendaries and they'll only log in to breed the new dragons of the month. It's all personal choice. And then there's people like me that decide to uh, go out of their way to try and finish off these events and they hate them more and more day by day by day that they find them. Like, sure, I get that there's some people that enjoy Dragons of the Light events. Sure, I appreciate the fact that we can get bonus points out of, or mainly bonus divine tickets out of the Dragons of the Light events. Look, I get it. The Dragons of the Light events give us bonus rewards, but... I would rather just not have a Dragon's Delight event and just have a weekend event and get the bonus divine tickets out of it rather than having to play the Dragon's Delight event. You feel me? You feel me? Maybe not. Maybe you do. But, you know, I think the main problem is with Dragon's Delight events, I only log in, say, once every six hours to collect the points that I need and then that's pretty much it, apart from when I'm having to, you know, spend the event currency to progress in the event, but I don't know, I don't know man, it's just this bit here where I have to spend all of the event currency and keep going through it and through it, it's just really boring to me. And I know I'm not the only one that finds it boring, some people do indeed enjoy it and if you enjoy it, I say power to you my friend, power to you, I genuinely do. 
but it's not a fan favourite of all, and that's the important thing. Everyone should be able to enjoy the events as much as they possibly can, and some of the events just seem to be a lot less enjoyable than some of the others. Do I prefer the old version of Dragon's Delight events? I don't know, because what used to happen with the old versions, I'm tempted to trash this here. I probably should have, but what ha what's happened before with Dragon's Delight events is uh, we had a lot less event currency, but it made the event quite difficult. We didn't have the random chance to get 10 points or 5 points at once, because now you every so often you'll get a bonus 10 points instead of just a singular point, which helps your event progress quite a lot. I still don't know which one I prefer anymore because this one takes so much longer to do but I think it does negate a little bit of just how RNG it was before but now you have to do it even more so maybe just the sheer quantity of the amount of times you have to do it makes it worse probably does but it feels like you're a little bit more in control of how the event runs than how it used to run I'm sure for people that have like barely even seen Dragon's Delight events to begin with, they're like, what the hell are you saying? Look, I'm sorry if I've confused you, but... You know, I've been playing this game for four years and like eight months, dude. I've been with this game too long. I remember everything close to, in terms of, you know, the changes to the events, how they used to be. Or well, maybe not the specifics, but I remember, you know, the sort of feel that I had for them. Like, the old castle events, the old versions of the Enchantment League and things like that. I still remember the general idea of how I felt with them and how they felt to play. But sometimes I think back from events now when I'm complaining about them, I'm like, do I prefer them how they were in the past? I don't know. I think for a lot of them I do prefer how they are these days, even if I don't really like them all that much, some of them, but, you know, just because it's better now than it used to be, that doesn't mean that the events are perfect, and it doesn't mean that the events can't be made better over time, which I would hope that they would, but whenever we see an event change to make it slightly more user-friendly, it seems we also get a massive dosage of RNG thrown in there. And I really don't appreciate that. I really don't appreciate having more and more RNG just flung in the game everywhere. Loot boxes, you know, Dragon's Delight events, things like that. I just want something that's not RNG. I know that the breeding's always been RNG and always will be. That's the premise of the game. You know, that, sure, I can live with that. But just something that isn't really based in RNG like that. I don't like seeing things thrown in. Like the bottomless dungeon with the RNG of the the reward dragons and the divine tickets. I hate that. I've played the dungeon for like a full month already nearly or three weeks or whatever it is and I haven't gotten a single proper reward from it yet. Like dude. I'm logging in four times a day to do that dungeon. I just ain't getting diddly squat and I know Quite a few other people are in the same boat, and I feel for you. I do. But that's what you get playing games like this. You know, they can always make it so that if it's RNG, you're tempted to buy it outright with real money. I'm never going to do that for something like the Bottomless Dungeon Dragons. But other people do get tempted, and they do spend that, that cash just to get the dragon that they want, which is unfortunate. And I don't appreciate it one bit. But that's the event or the sort of structure that has been with this game for many years. You know, maybe I'm just complaining into a black void. Maybe I should just move on so I never complain again. But I would probably complain about something no matter where I was. So I might as well complain here, right? But anyway. I think that is going to do me for now, so good luck with all of your breeding, and um, best of luck if you're doing the Dragon's Delight. If you don't enjoy it like me, I hope that you can at least get through it. If you do enjoy Dragon's Delight events, I hope that you have a smashing time. 
and I hope that you get the mosaic dragon. But anyway, for now, thank you for joining me, and until next time, I will see you then.